to do a little uh, tearing into this. This is my 9 by 20 CNC lathe. Some really nice machine work. I'm not, according to the previous owner, uh, he did all this and had it, had it anodized and everything. You know, it looks real similar to uh, another kit that's available out there. Just lock the belt off there. There's no particular uh, means of tension there. That first one was uh, SAE. So the, the goal here, that's nice, he put a uh, steel washer in there with a countersink. And one of the most exciting things is, is behind this plate here, I, I got to noticing some wires uh, and a jack that I didn't, on the back of the uh, Schumatech. DRO that I didn't know what it went to. Uh, it was unplugged. Well, come to find out, that goes to a photo cell in there for uh, RPMs. So with that, not only does that give me RPMs, that also gives me spindle position. And I vaguely remember talking to the guy on the phone and he said something to the effect that uh, this machine would do threading. So. You know, you figure with that installed, if I can get that hooked up to uh, Mach 3 and everything, uh, you know, I'm kind of golden. I got a lot more uh, lathe than I bargained for. So so there's the little thrust washers. Thrust washer and thrust bearings. Because I'm trying to get at this bracket back here, okay, because it flexes when it goes back and forth. And it could be that there's just a ton of drag on here. Uh, I'll have to take a look at that, too. Uh, do clean it up a little bit, stuff like that, but, uh, you know, never really hurts to dig into your tools and uh, if only to learn more about them. I need to tear into it just to get access the, uh, at the other part so I can uh, reinforce it. There's two ball bearings in there. I don't really need to take this off. I could have, uh, I probably should have just taken these two off instead of separating all the bearings and that stuff. But, you know, I've never been into this machine, so I want to dig into it a bit and clean it up a bit and that stuff and see. You know, I want to make sure there's no debris in the bearings here and stuff like that causing uh, binding and tension and all that kind of crap. Okay, so I've got a set screw in here to keep this from spinning. That's good. There's another one over here. There's a hole for it in threads, but the set screw's not there. And these were loose before. That was a big part of my problem, but then uh, after that it's still flexed. So... Definitely uh, got some parts to clean up. Now that one's slightly slotted. Interesting. Oh, maybe I wonder if they're both slightly slotted so that uh, it uh, lines up on the ball screw better. That would make sense. All right, that's going to just drop and twist. This should just slide. Should. There's nothing holding it now. Oh, yeah. Maybe all that drag is why I'm getting so much uh, backlash. Mm. Holy cow.
Hopefully I don't have too much grief with the realignment. Everything seems to be pretty uh, close tolerance wise. So. Yep, they're both slotted. That one's just completely full of crap. And that one's slotted as well. So that moves the entire thing. So it's not like it varies belt tension or anything like that. That aligns the uh, ball screw. Align, aligns the drive, the ball screw and everything like that with uh, that mount there. Interesting. So, got some cleaning up here to do. And that resistance of this trying to go back and forth, uh, that's huge. That is... Uh, that's definitely the biggest problem, and I'm sure why this is flexing. Oh, and that motor must uh, create quite a bit of torque with the ball screw and that stuff because you know it's not it's not like it's bending easily. I can't see any flex whatsoever in that aluminum, uh, but I could see it when I was running it. So, um. Let's tear down some MOA. It's a nice stand. And I do, uh, I do really like the fact that this has the T-slots. The ah. Uh. That's really friggin' tight, too. Well, I'm in the process of taking the rear splash guard off. Okay, and as soon as I took out the two here holding the box here, it uh, fell off because the plastic glue didn't uh, hold it to the other bracket there. So I'll have to uh, play with that a little bit and get that uh, better. Uh, the part that's... Uh, bugging me now though is I don't know if we can get up under here and see it it's uh, there's a bolt there behind the uh, scale see it down there yeah that's kind of a pain in the butt and the it's the metal's not slotted so I will be slotting that for sure if not coming up with a different uh, method to uh, I'll fix that side. That's uh, been a pain in the ass getting that off. So the edge of the metal here was actually behind the glass scale, which is part of the reason the bolt had to come all the way out in order to uh, get the panel off and out of the way. So, uh, yeah, royal royal pain. And good thing I'm taking it apart because I guess I'll have to uh, deal with that too. Is it me or is it just not square? Uh, I guess it doesn't really matter as long as it's holding the uh, reader square. Should be okay. Uh, and then there's the uh, there's how the motor's attached. I don't think I'm going to be taking that apart. This is a treadmill motor, and that's what's in uh, that's what's in the box there. Uh, the black and tan box is the controller for it. So I couldn't get this darn thing to. Uh, move. Uh, when you slide it back, the bolt, uh, the old keeper under there would keep it from going that way, uh, you know, for the screw under there. And then uh, it uh, didn't want to come this way because it just jammed up. So the what, seven millimeter nuts, those loosened up, but then the, uh, the set screws in there, they're probably a two millimeter. And for some reason, I don't have my two millimeter in there, so I'm using a 330 seconds. So I, I uh, was able to get it far enough forward there, and then move it that way and get the other one. They're a ball tip, so so this should allow it. I've got my finger under there, holding it because I didn't want to drop uh, the gib. And I wonder too if I if I were to take this out, if I could finagle a little bit of 
Uh, no, I was going to say, I could finagle a little bit of extra uh, x-axis there. But, if I remember right, I'm hitting the uh, the shroud. So, as I put it back together, I'll check in there. We'll see. So, next is to... Oh! Yeah. See if we can... Uh, Well, that one's kind of loose. That should be metric. Once once I get away from the kit, uh, everything should be uh, metric on the machine itself. So, oh, well, that's a little easier. Okay, that lifts up, and then there should be some on the other side. Well, I see one here, I see one there. Ah, yep, and there's one back there in the middle. So, I started taking this off, and I figured I might want to make a little record of that. Well, they didn't have enough uh, slack in the cable there, so it damaged the armor shield wrapped around the end there, so another big reason to dig into your used machines. <laughs> Make sure the uh, figure out whether or not the guy before you actually did it right. So I'm not necessarily in a position to say yay or nay whether he did, but I can tell you right now that uh, uh, you know if I wanted to run that all the way back there, then I I wouldn't have had enough room with the uh, cable here. Could have potentially just broken those wires right off. And now the question is, is can I get in there? I'm going to have to take the glass scale off. Ah, oh, this is just getting better. Wow. And in order to get the side off up here by the motor, uh, I might actually have to take the stupid motor off. No, oh, maybe. I'll tell you what. I think, you know, I think if I just drop... I think if I just drop this end, the whole thing will swing down enough I can easily get in there. So let's try that first. Oh, look at that. Hey, nothing fell out. Yay. All right. Time to do the part I really don't want to do. Start cleaning. Ugh. This is why I don't work on cars. Greasy, dirty crap. Oh well. This thing ought to run way, way nicer and uh, hopefully be more predictable and do what I need it to do because torque-wise, for as hard as it was to push that, uh, this thing will have plenty of torque to take a heavy cut, I think, provided my motor has uh, enough uh, oomph. So... You know, I could see me changing out the motor if need be. But, uh, well, well, let's start cleaning. Taking all the screws out, and it's pinned, okay? The pins don't go through, so I can't just drive them through. So I'm going to take a small, sharp chisel and see if I can't lift it off of there. A lot of guys just leave it in place. Normally, you know, I'd probably just leave it in place too. But what I'm looking to do is 
I need a guard for the ball screw. Okay, so just like an aluminum plate, a bracket that comes out and, and covers that so the chips don't, you know, fall on it. So that is why I'm uh, taking this off. And uh, I'll, so what I'll do is when I go to mount the other one up in there, you know, I'll, probably, I'll see if I can't pull these uh, pins out. Otherwise, I'll just cut them off flush. Uh, but then I should be able to figure out my aluminum piece to go in here, measure from here to the first hole, use this as my template to be able to drill the holes, and then I can put these screws back in to hold the aluminum piece in there to cover all that. So, Because basically how it works is the, the L bracket will go down in here. You know, it'll come out and I can put a little bend in it to go down here, and then as this travels back and forth, uh, it'll clear. Well, we'll see what kind of luck I have in pulling this out. Oh yeah, look at that. 